Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Digitising Using My Sona Embroidery Software. In this film I'm going to show you how you can easily transform your background image into an embroidery using the Quick Create tools. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of My Sonet or are just interested in finding out a little bit more about embroidery software, why not subscribe to our channel? And that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. The button's down below. In this film, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed, but everything I show you today you'll be able to do on a Mac computer with the platinum level installed. The principles are exactly the same. You might find it useful to watch my earlier film loading a background into the digitizing module so you understand how we've got this image of a zebra loaded in to our frame. I'm on the uh, quick create tab so let's actually talk a little bit about the defaults. The default colour when you're digitising is always this soldier blue. It's over here and you can see it's also featured in the design panel. Now to start off with I'm not going to change that colour mainly because what I want to show you will be much easier to see if I carry on using the blue but I will change that colour before the end of the film. Many people when they're using a background image like this find it easier not to match the colour exactly to that background image because uh, that way they can actually see what's their stitching and what's the background image. So to start off with I'm actually going to zoom in just so that you can see a little um, more closely what I'm doing. So the pattern fill box is on green and so is the satin line. That means when I do the next stage, I will create a pattern fill box with a satin line outline. And that's the default setting. So I'm going to start off by uh, clicking on the quick stitch. And then I'm going to click on this area of my zebra's tail. And straight away you can see that we've got a blue and red line around that. And that's telling me that area is selected. Now the colour tolerance box is about the difference between areas of colour within the background image. And moving the slider closer to 100% will mean that more areas of closer colour will be selected. So for instance if you have a range of blues it will um, select more areas of blue. You might find the colour tolerance slider useful to use when you have areas of different colours that mix into each other. But as you can see with my image it literally is black and white so the colour tolerance isn't going to make a big difference. I'm not going to worry about the number of my points, I'm going to keep that on low and then I'm going to click OK. And straight away you can see that I've got an area of pattern fill with um, an outline of a satin line. When you're digitising, an important thing to remember is you want to think about how the machine is going to move around the hoop um, when it's stitching out. So you want to actually think about the order the bits would be stitched out in. So in this case I would stitch across the body, work around the face, then come back and do the feet. Um, again, I'm just going to zoom back in so that you can see this next stage. Now, I don't uh, want the next area that I'm going to do, which in this case is going to be hit, um, the black stripe on the tail. I don't want that to have a satin line round it. So there's a couple of ways that I can knock that out. So what I can do is I can click on the bottom part of the box and that gives me all the options for lines around um, a selected area. And you would choose one of these if you wanted um, a line or an edge. So it might be that you would use, say, running stitch or maybe a double uh, zigzag or even a triple stitch if you want to kind of add some definition to your pattern fill. But in this case, I'm going to go no borderline. 
just like before I'm going to pick up on the quick stitch and uh, quick stitch and I'm going to check that I've got my blue and red lines around it I'm going to click OK I'm going to work on this area just like before checked it clicked OK so I'm just going to take a moment to talk about the pattern fill options I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this film talking about pattern fill because there's a whole film in this series about using pattern fill but if for some reason I wanted to change my pattern fill or indeed have no pattern fill I could choose that from this menu but again I'm going to stick with the pattern fill and just like before click on that area and keep going so I'm going to work my way up my zebra now let's come to his eye if I click on this um, uh, the outer ring of his eye and then click OK you can see that it's completely filled in that's not what I want so I'm going to uh, go back a step so control or command Z and actually I'm going to use the quick stitch and auto hole so I've checked that button I'm going to click on it and can you see in addition to this uh, blue and red outer line I've also got an inner yellow and green line and that's showing me essentially the uh, border to the hole that I'm about to digitize so I'm then going to click OK and can you see we've just got a ring of pattern fill and my top tip is I would always opt for using the quick stitch and auto hole rather than just quick stitch just in case there's a hole there that you hadn't noticed so I'm just going to carry on working my way round my zebra and then let's come down and we're going to work on these areas on his legs now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rather than having a pattern fill I'm actually going to do his hooves in a satin fill and uh, one top tip just to be aware of I'm on the view tab I'm using the get length and can you see that this is about six mil in um, height so that means my stitches won't be a, a much bigger than that I would strongly recommend that you don't use a, uh, the quick stitch satin uh, to fill areas greater than nine mil basically um, often what the machine will think that they are floating stitches and either try and cut them off or you'll have these floats that can catch on things so don't try and uh, digitize areas of satin stitch greater than uh, nine mil and just like before I'm going to click on it I've got my blue and red lines click OK and again let me just zoom out so you can see from this my zebra I've got um, uh, he's got a lovely big swishy tail on here and uh, we've given him satin hooves but at the moment we've only just got one color so what I'm now going to do is up here I'm going to go with the color change now I'm actually just going to choose this gray I will change my color um, so it's more correct before I export it but what I'm going to do just like before I've now got this gray color here in the bottom of my film strip um, I'm going to check my quick stitch and auto hole hole and I'm going to work my way along my zebra And you can see from that just how quick it is using the quick create tools to digitize your embroidery if I look at this on life view you can see I've got a really cute little embroidery that I've done really quickly 
but let me show you some other tools that you might find useful. I'm going to do another color change. I'm going to pick up a yellow here. Now over here on this pull down menu here, you can see we've got a whole load of shapes, 120 different shapes that you can choose. To start off with, I'm going to use the uh, number one. Now when I click on this shape, that's going to put a pattern fill of that shape into the center of the hoop. I'm going to hold down my shift key so that I can uh, keep it as a circle and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and just move this up here. I'm going to change my color again. I'm going to go with an orange. Yep, that is fine. And then in this case, I am going to choose another shape it is, here we go, shape 47. But in this case, I don't want it to be pattern fill. I just want it to be sat in line. So I can uh, click on that. So I've activated my sat in line. I can click on my pull down arrow here and say no fill. And then when I click on this shape, that's just going to give me my sat in line, which I can bring up here. And again, holding down my shift key, just going to make this a little bit bigger. Ooh. Again, just a little bit, tiny bit bigger. And I can use my arrow keys on my computer just to move this, nudge this down. So you can see, again, how easy it is to build um, uh, motifs and shapes using the inbuilt shapes up here. But there's, uh, well, two last things. Again, I'm going to zoom in. And it might be you say, yes, but this area around here, Karina, we've got this satin line, but the pattern fill is coming over it. Let me show you how you can uh, change that. So I'm going to go up to my uh, color change. I'm going to click on that. So that's active. You can see we've got a blue box. I'm then going to scroll down to step number 35 and still hold it. I'm going to hold down my shift key and that selected them all. OK, it's all blue. And then if I hit this key, this is actually going to take this to the top of the film strip. And can you see now when this is stitched out, the machine's going to stitch out this gray area and then it's going to on uh, stitch out the second color on here and so my satin line is on top. So bear that in mind, the order that shapes appear in uh, your film strip. So let's come back. I'll just zoom out because we have got a grey and blue zebra. Let me show you how you can change. So I'm going to double click um, on this colour. I'm going to choose white. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to double click on my blue. I'm going to choose black. I'm going to click OK. And straight away you can see this is beginning to look more like a zebra. So I'm happy with that. So I can go ahead and either go send to my uh, Sonet or I can go file and export in all the main file formats for embroidery machines and then save it onto a USB stick. So you can see how quick it is to create a really unique, lovely embroidery from an image that you've loaded into the background. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumb and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can help you get started with digitizing using the MySonet embroidery software. Happy sewing!